Let's now address the issue of regulation because that, again, uh, perhaps is getting a disproportionate amount of mind space and headline space as well. Let's address that issue in the context of the New Delhi Declaration. You said uh, in a quick conversation with my colleague Ashmit a few days ago that we don't intend to talk in abstracts and over the next six months you intend to actually put down very clearly what the roadmap is going to look like. Now as we forge consensus between 29 countries on what the road ahead for AI regulation should look like, what is India's own position going to be? The US is taking a position, we've got the Biden administration issuing an executive order, uh, you've got the UK doing its thing with the Bletchley Declaration, you've got the EU moving. What is India's own position going to be on regulation? So to understand this, Shireen, uh, first of all, we need to understand that in the last 12 to 18 months, the world that talked about AI in very abstract, generic, you know, fuzzy, warm terms 18 months ago has suddenly been catapulted into this totally real AI world where every discourse is not now in the abstract. Now, when you talk about safety and trust of AI, it is no longer about ethics or responsibility or responsible use or some warm and fuzzy concept like that. It is now post chat GPT. Uh, you can see today, I was at the Bletchley Park uh, Safety Summit that was organized by the government of UK, that countries have moved from the abstract of AI to the the real granular uh, focus on safety of AI. And I said in Ed Bletchley that I think we are making a mistake by correcting it so much mm. that you are now creating a narrative that is demonizing AI. Mm. And I said very clearly, and this is the stand of the government, and you heard the Prime Minister say at GPA inaugural as well, we consider AI as fundamentally an empowering technology. It is the greatest invention of our times. It is the greatest empowering technology of the times. We believe that it can be used to do things in healthcare, disease, uh, uh, agriculture, governance in ways that we would have taken years and decades to do. However, what the world did not notice in 10 years of social media about the safety and harm mm. and user harms and criminality, we should certainly wake up to it now and create not an American framework or a European framework or an Indian framework, a global framework. Mm. The nature of the internet and, the, and our experiences with social media and the toxicity and the crime and the harms on it have shown us that notwithstanding any country having great rules and laws and regulations, Singapore has great laws, uh, Australia has great uh, laws, uh, China has no laws but they have a great <laughs> safe internet. Uh, so none of that works because of the ubiquitous nature of the You're in a provocative mood, aren't you? <laughs> with, with, with China, there's no need to be provoked. It's just <laughs> stating the fact is enough. Uh, uh, no, so the ubiquitous nature of the internet and therefore the fact that almost 80, 90 percent of cyber crimes, cyber harms, are extra jurisdictional. That means mm. the perpetrator is in one jurisdiction, the victim is in a second, yeah. and the crime is in a third. So there is, n there is no way to avoid creating a global understanding on certain principles. So what GPA has done this year uh, in New, New Delhi is to say, look, AI should be inclusive. It should certainly not be the, like the old model where a few countries have it and everybody else is a, a wannabe and uh, you know, want to have. So it should be inclusive. Second is that we need a global framework and we need the global framework to be done very quickly mm. because in the next six, eight, ten months, AI is going to come at us, as, uh, as uh, Mustafa Suleiman says in his book, The Coming Wave, in a way and form and shape that we uh, are not even ready to anticipate mm. or understand. Mm. So we need these things in place very quickly. And we need this as a granular set of principles and rules that all countries can follow not in the abstract. If all of us keep saying AI should be responsible and mm. AI should be ethical, that's certainly not enough because I can assure you that one person's ethical interpretation of ethics, of interpretation of ethics is very different from the other. And mm. then we'll have an ombudsman sitting there and adjudicating your ethics versus mine. Sure. So I think we need rules, we need some guidelines, we need principles. India has made some steps since 2021 on talking about openness, mm. safety and trust and accountability, legal accountability of platforms. 
our approach today towards AI, and this is for those practitioners in the room today, is through the prism of casting legal accountability on platforms for the safety and trust of that platform. Mm. So uh, that is broadly our approach to it at this moment. And like I said, it, it will evolve. We think between uh, Delhi's India AI launched and Slovenia, we have a, uh, a conference in February and then we will have something in June, July. In the next six months, hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, we should have a broad understanding among countries of the world, if not all, but most, about what ought to be the guardrails, what ought to be the legal guardrails and accountability framework for AI platforms.